he was the personal tutor of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella's son, teaching them map making, shipbuilding, and navigation. His brother actually captained the Santa Maria. These Africans. So Christopher Columbus came to that castle dungeon over there, that fortress, before he traveled to the Americas. And the legend is that he came there to adjust his compass, but the truth is that he came there to actually interrogate the intelligence of the Africans in West Africa that he heard knew how to sail those waters. But everybody in Europe thought the world was flat. And it was only in West Africa that we had the knowledge and the wisdom that was left over that the possibility of traveling across that Atlantic. And that's what Chris Columbus came here for. So they've erased all of that. That's all our memory. They cannot enslave us and tell us that we're inferior unless they erase our memory and our history of who we were and what we were to them when we came in contact. They were seekers of knowledge and we had we were the possessors of knowledge. This is the ancient temple of Timbuktu, Jenei, Songhai. We had universities there of high learning. Where did those universities go? Where did those volumes go? Where did those people go? We were those people. You can't sit down there and think that somebody like um, George Washington Carver, you know, just sit down and just think about things out of the air. Fine, he did. But he comes from a pedigree. It's in his DNA. You can't think that uh, Benjamin Banneker just could make an almanac and make up a book with stars and when to plant food and how to make a clock. It's in his DNA. We come from those people. The manuscripts they found in Mali with astronomy and astrology and mathematics and science, that we have manuscripts written. We've been, we've been taught that we are an oral people that we don't have a written history. We don't have a written history because the white man interrupted our history for 300 years and told us it's against the law to let a black man read or write. Uh -huh. That's where that comes from. That's not our legacy. That's part of the manufactured legacy of the Negro whom they created, not the Africans whom they captured. Yes, Nick. Nothing Fill their confidence that they repose in the next generation that we have not surrendered and we shall not surrender. Our tour today will involve visiting the cell of the condemned cell where many of our ancestors were condemned to death because their spirits would not cooperate with this incarceration. We will visit the male dungeon where thousands of our ancestors, even millions of them, were incarcerated, both male and female, separated. We will visit both those dungeons. We will look at this whole edifice on a whole and what it represents. And we will go through the door of no return. And most importantly, we will come back to the door of the time. But we had to have this session so we're on one mind. So we both the sides of our group. We're going to be moving through. But remember, when we go into those dungeons, he was our ancestors. Here is where our identity was robbed. Here is a manufacturing ground for the Negro that hitherto did not exist. Remember that when our ancestors were brought here and having been captured in all the places of the interior where we were captured from, there were no African Americans captured. There were no Jamaicans captured. There were no Brazilians captured. They had not been created yet. They had not been constructed yet. Our names were robbed from us, our identities were robbed from us, our language was robbed from us, the very memory of ourselves were robbed from us. That was the importance of us going down into dungeons, into darkness. So the darkness would be prevailing over our mind, that our memory of ourselves would be lost, that the history of ourselves would be lost.